Nick Merckx just got into a little bit of hot water with one of the tweets he did that seemed to be taking a shot at the L plus community. And that ended up having Call of Duty come out and saying that his bundle is no longer allowed in their store. And then, of course, Tim the Tatman and Dr. Disrespect came out and supported their friend Nick Merckx. And now they're in like, hot water with Call of Duty. But uh, the craziest thing is how this all started. So it started with this video. And what happened was a school board was voting on whether or not to take part in Pride this month. And there's a bunch of like pro L plus members there supporting the decision for them to vote yes. And then, of course, a bunch of like anti L plus people showed up and started causing troubles and started physically assaulting some of the peaceful L plus protesters. And then uh, four of them ended up getting arrested for assaulting peaceful protesters. And in all of his wisdom, Nick Marks responded saying they should leave the little children alone. That's the real issue. Now, if you don't know, a very common attack of the L plus community is that they're groomers and pedophiles. So this seems like Nick Marks is saying, yes, I agree. They are groomers and pedophiles and they should leave the children alone because of that. And the craziest thing about all of this is this shouldn't have even been a thing at all. Because the school that was voting to take part in Pride this month had already taken part in Pride for the last three years with no problem. So this is going to be the fourth year in a row that they recognize Pride Month. But now all of a sudden, it's a problem because the right has decided to politicize it. And I'm just going to toss this in here because I think this guy is scum. But uh, Mo came out right away saying like, yeah, the fact that we have this many people upset over something as basic as leaving the little kids alone. Little kids, you don't have the capacity to think for themselves. It's simple. That's why parents are responsible for them until adults. That's not true. Teachers are responsible for them for a long time as well and responsible for the education and teach them all kinds of things. But why is anybody ever listening to Mo? Like, why is he still relevant? He's a known scammer. Like, he was part of the whole CSGO Diamonds where the website was rigging odds to have this guy win money so it would tempt their viewers to gamble on a site with rigged odds so they'd lose all their money. So he's a scum human being, so I don't know why he's still in the scene, but he's still in the scene, but whatever. Now, getting back to the actual issue at hand decided to shoot on a guy that I don't like. A lot of people even just have issues with people being taught sex education in school at all. But luckily we have studies that have come out that have like been researching stuff for three decades or have like look, look back at three decades worth of research to figure out if teaching young kids about sex education is a good thing. And surprise, surprise, it's a good thing. Um, because it ends up having so, uh, the outcomes, the kids are more likely to appreciate sexual diversity, dating and intimate partner violence prevention. So intimate partner violence goes down, development of healthy relationships go up, prevention of sexual abuse, which everyone should be for. Everyone is always trying to like talk about like, oh, protect the kids, protect the kids. Sex education actually protects the kids. And then improves social emotional learning, increased media literacy, blah, 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 blah. So sub sub substantial evidence supports sex education beginning in elementary school. That is scaffolded. That means like it gets more and more advanced throughout the years and of longer duration, as well as LGBTQ inclusive education across the school curriculum and on social justice approach to healthy sexuality. Now you may be wondering, how does sex education reduce child abuse? To understand that, you have to understand who abuses child, which brings us back to the tweet. So, because like the tweet kind of says they should leave little children alone, that's the real issue. And a lot of the right attacks are that L plus people are just like child groomers or child predators or like pedophiles. Now this is all summarized on a YMCA document. You can obviously find the studies to support this, but the idea that a stranger is going to sexually abuse your kid just isn't a thing. About 93% of children who are victims of sexual abuse know their abuser. And then 96% of people who have sexually abused their children are male. 76% are married men. So most likely not part of the L plus community. And then of course the people who abuse their children are adults. And that the younger the victim is, the more likely it is that the abuser is a family member. So yeah, the people abusing kids are family members or close friends or relatives. It's not some random L plus person on the street. So the reason why like sex education works is because it's somebody that the child is trusting. So like when they tell the child to like, oh, take off your clothes, this is okay. This is like, like everybody does this, but this is just our secret, so keep it together. You have to give the child the knowledge on what is and isn't okay between child and adult. 
And these are awkward conversations, which parents usually aren't the best at doing. It also makes it so children are more open to talk about this stuff. So they're more likely to go to an adult when someone is doing or saying something that is making them uncomfortable because it's not a taboo subject. They're used to talking about this stuff, so they know how to talk about it, and they have a better understanding of what is inappropriate touching and what is not. But Nick did respond because when he made this tweet, Call of Duty came out and said that they were no longer going to have a skin bundle in the store. So Nick responded trying to clarify what he meant with the tweet. I just don't think it's any place for a teacher or a school. I don't think it's the place to speak about things like that. It's not that I think that it shouldn't be spoken about. If that's what you got from that tweet, then you're just wrong. You're just wrong. Uh, I don't think you would be wrong if you got that from his tweet. I think he just... Giving him the benefit of the doubt, He, if he doesn't actually think L plus people are like pedophiles and like groomers and want to like prey on your kids, he worded that tweet horribly. I don't have any quarrel with anybody in here. I don't have any quarrel with people on, on, on the internet. Um, it wasn't an anti, I guess, gay, gay, gay tweet. That wasn't what it was. Um, now, listen, if you have issues with me or if you have issues with that tweet, then, hey, listen, I'm down to agree to disagree. That's fine. We can agree to disagree. But if you think that I hate you because you're, you're a certain way, you just couldn't be any more wrong. That's not the truth. And he goes on to say, simply feel that I want to be the one and my wife wants to be the one to speak with our child about stuff like that. And that was, that was, that was the tweet. That was the tweet. You can take the tweet if you want and you can spin it, flip it, flop it, quote, tweet it. You can put 10 paragraphs on top of it. You can do whatever you want to it to make you feel better if that's what you want to do. But that was the tweet. Okay. So if you came here to hear that, I hope. I hope you feel a little better about it. I didn't mean to upset anybody. I know that I did. I'm not apologizing about the tweets. I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like it's wrong. I'm gonna stand by what I said. I'm not gonna delete the tweet. All right, so if we're taking him at face value and giving him the benefit of the doubt, he didn't actually mean that they're groomers and pedophiles. He just meant that he doesn't want his kids being taught about that from teachers, which is kind of weird because your kids are going to have to learn that L plus people exist in the first place. And he says he's not wrong. And we have the facts that prove he is wrong. Parents will think that they are should be the ones to teach their kids about sex education and all this stuff. And like the research just doesn't back that up. So you can feel however you want to feel. Facts just disagree with your feelings. So I guess whether or not you want to be upset at Nick Merckx is just whether or not you're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. But now let's get into some fun stuff because Dr. Disrespect has to like stick up for his boy, right? And he says this. I feel like A, they either need to apologize publicly to him or reinstate his bundle in order for me to consider playing Call of Duty again. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I love to see that Dr. Disrespect is more loyal to Nick Merckx than he is to his own wife. And like, does he, does he really think that his like 10 or 20,000 viewers really matters to Call of Duty. Like, Call of Duty has been the biggest game in the industry for decades, like, long before streamers. But then again, it's not surprising. Like, I, you probably shouldn't be listening to Dr. Disrespect on anything of value anyways, because this is the guy who promoted Shungite and was telling his viewers before he got banned on Twitch that they should check out David Icke because he has some really good ideas. And David Icke is known anti-Semitic. And is the one who came up with the whole lizard people conspiracy theory. So seems like kind of a crackpot. But then you have Tim the Tagman. And originally he was like super iffy about the whole thing. A lot of you saw what happened with Nick yesterday. So I'm going to just say this at the front, man. I love Nick. I talked to him for about 30 minutes last night. I know him, bro. And I truly do not think he meant to hurt anyone with what he said. It really, all, all I can say is this, man. Tabman Army, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, all right? We talked for a while last night and he's doing all right. <sighs> That's all I can really say on it, man. That's all I'm really gonna say on it. <laughs> so you're like super wishy-washy, really didn't take the side, just said I was like, I like the guy. And says he didn't mean to offend anybody, upset anybody. But then after Tim the Tank Man saw the discourse playing out and saw Nick 
Merrick's walked it back a little bit, he came out in stronger support. And okay, I can support this guy because he kind of walked it back and didn't he didn't come out and make it worse. Tim the man finally says, Yeah, he's been my friend for years. We went and getting our COD operations together. It feels wrong for me to have to my to have mine and him no longer have his no longer have his. In support of my friend, please remove the Tim the Tap Man bundle. Which is kind of weak to do it after you saw your friend walk it back and you saw the discourse so you could see if there was if one side was getting slaughtered or not and no side really is it's just both people are split on what they already think no one's ever going to change their mind on this this is going to blow over call of duty isn't going to be affected these people's careers aren't going to be effective so this is like huge drama for a couple of days that isn't going to matter 